let's talk about Anthony Richardson getting benched because this is the biggest news of the day. Now, the question here is, did Anthony Richardson deserve to be benched? It's a two-part question because, number one, I do think he deserved to be benched for tapping out of the game. It was a terrible look. He runs around, gains a couple yards. He scrambled a lot on that play. He did. But to tap out the game and sub yourself out is a terrible look, man. The very next play was a handoff. Now, if Anthony Richardson is in that game, do the Colts decide to throw on third and goal? We have to mention they were at like the 20-yard line. They were far away from the end zone. Do I think Shane Steichen is saying, yes, my quarterback that is not completing passes at a high clip, I'm going to let him throw into the end zone into multiple bodies in coverage and risk an interception when I could just kick a field goal and get three points? No. I don't think Shane Steichen would have called the pass play even if Richardson was in the game. I think the third down play call was going to be a run regardless of who was in there at quarterback. Anthony Richardson, knowing that, you can't just stay in the game and hand the ball off. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty insane, right? I don't think he truly understands what it means to be the leader of a franchise. He's only 22 years old. He shouldn't have it all figured out right away. But when a team drafts you with the fourth overall pick, not only are they betting on your talent, but they're betting on your intangibles, how you can lead an organization, how you can rally the players and teammates around you. To this point, Anthony Richardson has showed zero of those intangibles. And when you couple that with the fact that he has been the least accurate quarterback in the NFL, you're going to get benched. I'm sure him tapping out didn't sit well with the locker room. He has been picked apart by the media this week. I also think this move might have been made to protect Anthony Richardson. Right now, the entire sports world is talking about him. They're talking about his poor play. They're talking about him tapping out. This Sunday, you face the Vikings, one of the league's best defenses in the NFL, in front of a primetime audience. If Richardson played bad in that game, the talk would be even louder. I think this move was in a way made to protect Anthony Richardson. We're not going to risk our quarterback that is getting talked about negatively in the media all week long to have a bad game on Sunday in front of a primetime audience and now be dragged even more the following week. Let's put Joe Flacco in there. Let's discipline Anthony Richardson for tapping out of the game because we have to also put our foot down and hold them accountable. This is unacceptable behavior. This cannot happen. And I think this benching accomplishes those two things. It accomplishes holding Richardson accountable and it accomplishes protecting Richardson. I don't think he was benched because of the film against the Texans. And I want to make that clear. He was 10 for 32. 31% completion percentage. Man, that looks bad. 22 incompletions. I charted all those 22 incompletions. Seven of them were bad throws or decisions. Six of them were drops. Two of them were throwaways or, or spike, which happened at the end of the game. And two of them were receiver error or miscommunications. Ten of those incompletions were not on Richardson. They were not bad moments. And the bad throws and the decisions that I'm mentioning, which were seven of them, under pressure, 
throw where he missed A.D. Mitchell on the left side. Miss Pierce when stepping up in a collapsing pocket when his tackles were both collapsing on him and he had to step up in the pocket. Alec Pierce won deep. Probably would have been a touchdown if Anthony Richardson put it on the money, but he didn't. Alec Pierce had to slow down, work back to the ball. Richardson was under pressure on that play as well. A bad miss to Downs. I thought that was the most egregious miss of the day. He missed A.D. Mitchell deep on the right sideline. Not the touchdown play, but it happened later on in the game where he just overthrew him by a little bit. The interception, obviously, was a terrible decision. Under pressure, under throw to Alec Pierce again, and he missed Mallory, the tight end, on the final drive. Half of them were plays under pressure. He was under pressure on 60-plus percent of his dropbacks. The offensive line did not block well. The first six non-screen dropbacks, he was 0 for 6. The first incompletion was a drop by Pittman. The second was a jump ball to Mo Ali Cox. Not a bad decision. That was the only place to go with the ball on that play. Third was a bad pass. Fourth, touchdown drop by A.D. Mitchell. Fifth, drop by a tight end. Six, under pressure, couldn't get it to A.D. Mitchell. When you are in an offense that is asking you to be ultra aggressive and push the ball downfield, your accuracy numbers aren't going to look good to begin with. And that's just the truth of the matter. We have to contextualize quarterback play. What are these offenses asking this quarterback to do? Joe Flacco was asked to complete different type of passes than Anthony Richardson. Richardson this year, his A dot on non-screen dropbacks is 13.9. That is the highest since 2016 per next gen stats. The league average this year is nine yards. Richardson's expected completion percentage this year is 58.6%. League average is 66.3%, which means the passes Richardson is expected to complete are improbable completions to begin with compared to league average. Richardson, the stats don't look good. I understand that. And he hasn't developed as fast as you'd like him to. But I think when you watch the film, it tells a different story. But the stats right now are terrible. And teams are blitzing Richardson because it takes away the run game and the QB scramble game. And they're forcing him to beat them. And right now, he's just too inconsistent as a passer. And there have been moments where his pass catchers have also let him down. I'm not giving up on Richardson just yet. Although the most worrying thing about Richardson's franchise quarterback outlook is not the level of play, in my opinion, because I think with reps, it can get better. To me, the most alarming thing is the intangibles, the leadership quality. If a media member asks you a question of why you went out the game, you can't be that honest with them. You have to lie. You have to say something. I cramped up. I felt a little pain. You have to make something up. I don't think he understands the magnitude of the moment, how much weight is on his shoulders to be successful. The coaching staff is counting on him. Chris Ballard, who drafted him, is counting on him. I don't think he quite understands what it means to be a franchise quarterback. And I think that's the most alarming part of it all. That's my take on it. So he was benched. Did he deserve to get benched? And I think he did for tapping out 100%. Was his film bad? I don't think so. I think if you watch back the game and any smart person that analyzes football and has watched that film back, Dan Orlovsky, Nate Tice, Chase Daniel, who ripped on AR, but then watched the film and said, actually, he wasn't that bad. I think that's the consensus takeaway, is that the film wasn't that bad. But tapping out the game, that was very, very bad.